Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. Our very special guest and friend of ATP is back, Daniel Greenfeld, scholar, author, provocateur, and all-around political expert. Welcome back, Daniel. Thank you so much for having me back. I wish it was just a happier occasion. No kidding, my friend. So we, we agree, as we've been chatting, that the 2020 election is a disaster. Um, we're a democratic republic, and for as long as I have been studying it, as from a child till today, half a century, we've all been educated that our vote matters, that we get to be part of the process to pick who governs us. I can't believe the tsunami of people who right now are convinced the election results as they now stand are fraudulent. How are we, the American people, ever going to believe again that our vote really counts? That's the big question. There are a lot of people who are legitimately concerned about this. Now, speaking as a Californian, my vote never actually mattered. Uh, but nonetheless, for people who are not trapped in a blue territory um, that are that function like a one-party state, um, people tend to think that if you vote, you can actually influence the outcome. And you can influence the outcome, but at the same time, uh, there's a push and pull there. Uh, for example, if you go back into American history in the 19th century, one of the arguments against women voting was that voting was too violent. Why was voting so violent? Because you would literally have gangs fighting physically over ballots in places, again, like Philly, like New York. Uh, they would come and try to snatch the ballots. Uh, there would be a fight, fist fights. Uh, people would punch each other in the face. And this is what voting was like. Well, you, you know, I, it's an interesting historical um, reference, which I, honestly, I wasn't aware of. I appreciate you sharing the story. It seems like we've gone from the overt to the covert, right? So in, in the case of recently, you've got ballots being delivered supposedly by unmarked trucks and out-of-state vehicles in the middle of the night after the poll watchers were sent home. I don't know which is better, the sophistication that they're doing now or the brute force in the old days of gangs with clubs. And, and you combine that, Daniel, with the fact that every single major poll, whether it came from a pollster, that that's what they do, or the media that promoted it or did their own polling was not a little bit wrong, was stupendously wrong. It would be like Columbus sailed from Europe to get to the New World and ended up in Greece. They weren't close. They weren't even on the right planet in terms of what they were projecting. And as Trump has said a number of times, and I think he's right about this, if you think your guy or gal is gonna lose by a landslide and it's a fait accompli, why get off your butt and go vote? Do you believe that those polls literally suppressed the Trump vote? So, you know, once it can be human error, the second time it's very obviously enemy action. There's a pattern here. It's not a subtle pattern. The pattern here is that when President Trump runs for president, uh, the polls all swing the other way. And it's very interesting that you have all these justifications, these claims, Trump voters aren't really prepared to closet and share who they're voting for. I mean, maybe there's some truth to that, but at the same time, you see these huge rallies. Some people are coming out for President Trump. Are we supposed to believe that these same people were refusing to tell posters uh, that they were supporting President Trump? I think there is a much more likely explanation, which is that they were creating a narrative. So the narrative was that uh, Biden was going to inevitably win, President Trump was going to lose, all the ballots would be tabulated, and we'd see that the results would be completely non-transparent would be very smooth and consistent. Now, once people actually began going in person to the polls, once they actually saw very clearly the Republicans were not ordering the mail-in ballots, uh, then they panicked and suddenly Democrats before election, they began encouraging Democrats um, to actually come out to the polls to vote in person because it made it look a bit better. But still, everybody saw the result. Um, election night comes in, President Trump was leading, suddenly things get shut down, they get mysteriously shut down, they're supposed to be a one week in one place, um, they're supposed to have stopped counting, and then they suddenly start counting again. 
And the bottom line is suddenly all these votes arrive and suddenly Biden is leading. And this obviously smells fishy, it smells dirty, which is exactly what it is. So the polls created this perception and the perception was that um, Biden was going to win and the ballot vote was supposed to back up this perception. Uh, the in-person voting kind of got in between that, but the polls being off was no accident. The polls were off in 2016, the polls were off in 2020. They were off tra tremendously, gigantically. They were predicting something that did not happen that was never going to happen. And there's one obvious explanation for that, which is that they were fake from the very beginning. Well, let's talk about what you alluded to. There's, you know, a little bit of irregularity, i.e. a water leak that probably wasn't a major water leak. But my gosh, Daniel, the stories are dramatic and outlandish. Like we talked about a second ago, trucks showing up in the middle of the night from out of state, ballots being unloaded after the polling um, tabulation centers are closed, after all the Republican poll watchers were sent home. We went to bed um, November 3rd night, very late, and Trump was up in every key state. And by the morning, miraculously, as if by divine intervention for Biden, it was tied. And then it was going the other way. Talk about what might have happened and what might have went on to swing things the other way. So what we're dealing with is a multi-level fraud. Uh, briefly, we discussed before the kind of old-fashioned ballot fraud. Uh, this is something that is still very much on, on a regular basis. And that consists of a variety of things. It consists of uh, planting ballots, altering ballots um, in the old fashioned sense. It consists of bringing people to the polls to vote or to vote often. It consists of a particularly grotesque habit uh, that Democrats repeatedly do, which is taking people who are elderly or mentally disabled, uh, who are not actually capable of understanding what's going on and voting for them. Uh, this is the kind of old fashioned stuff. But obviously we've been moving to voting machines. Uh, there are three major manufacturers of voting machines. One of them is the Minion, which President Trump has been focusing on. Another is ESNS um, election systems, and that one was actually in play in Philly and, and Pennsylvania. Interesting thing about it um, is that actually before the election, you had a break in in the Philly election warehouse. Uh, they stole encrypted flash drives. Um, they stole a laptop. This was information that would allow them to uh, manipulate the results. Afterward, when they actually uh, did a review of the machines, the voting machine numbers on the actual machines there did not match the log. So something there was obviously clearly going on. Uh, Philly, and uh, Philly, it's easier to find uh, dirty elections and clean elections. One of my favorite examples of this um, is a photo from the Philly public record, um, whose motto was the good we do must be made public. It features Bob Brady, former top Democrat congressman, currently chair of the Philadelphia Democrat Party. He's posing with two men. One of them was another former Philly congressman who would be convicted of voter fraud. Another one is, would actually be convicted of voter fraud this year. And all two of them are Democrat leaders. Bob Brady is the head of the Philadelphia Democrat Party. Uh, recently, when they were prepping for the election campaign, um, Bob Brady had also been uh, investigated for election payoffs. Uh, he didn't actually go down. The FBI is very gentle with top Democrats. Uh, but two of his strategists did go down. One of his strategists, Ken Smuck, was out of prison and on the Zoom call with the Philadelphia Democrat Party, strategizing for the whole Biden campaign. So the elections there are incredibly dirty and crooked. Um, the thefts of the voting machines are just an example of a kind of a hybrid of old fashioned um, and new digital fraud. So you've got, um, you're stealing the encrypted data. You're able to tamper with the voting machines. Now you've got the voting machines themselves and you've got the entire um, system set up behind them because once you're actually playing with uh, numbers, um, so you've got, once you're actually starting to uh, digitize information, uh, then it becomes a matter of adding zeros. It's a matter of playing with fractions, which is what a lot of the people who are looking at uh, GEMS databases, for example, with um, electronic voting, are looking at as to ways in which you can um, play with numbers to um, create massive fraud. The problem, though, is that as with um, financial frauds, what you have to start doing is forensic accounting. A number of people have been trying to do that. They've been looking at the numbers and going, uh, this doesn't match um, the kind of numbers that you would normally get. There's something artificial about this. Because when you start manipulating numbers, then you start actually seeing 
artificial results, you start seeing numbers that are implausible, unrealistic. The problem is that's a long way from actually proving anything. Uh, there's no real body of um, legal work that actually looks at statistical analysis and uses that as evidence that there's been an election fraud. There was an attempt to do that once it got um, past the judge to the point where they're actually able to try to build their case, but they couldn't actually make their case. So um, a multi-state effort challenging a presidential election is itself unprecedented. Um, tackling, uh, using statistical analysis to demonstrate that there's been large scale fraud would be absolutely huge and unprecedented and obviously an incredible challenge. But this is the, that kind of year. Boy, well put, great summary. Thanks for joining us, Daniel. And thank you for joining us on ATP Report today. Please subscribe to our text message alert system if you haven't yet by sending the word truth in the message box and send it to 88202, push send. You'll be automatically subscribed to our text message alert system. You'll get all of our shows like this one with the very informed and brilliant Daniel Greenfield and everything else from ATP on your cell phone for free. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Newsbaum. Thank <laughs> you.